Hi everyone, this is Edgar Huang. Today I'm going to give a talk about college application preparation based on Common App. And before I talk, let me tell about myself a little bit. I was a professor. Uh, I taught in six different universities, and, but I retired in 2019. Uh, but since 2019, I have continued to support uh, students from high schools and the middle schools. My uh, uh, job is to send them to their dream schools. Uh, I was a researcher uh, for ex uh, with extensive publications in healthcare and uh, uh, many other areas as well. Uh, I was a part-time college admission officer uh, for about four or five years when I was teaching at Indiana University. And I learned English in my undergraduate degree. So that's why I have a commanded English very solid, solidly. And I also have been an English instructor uh, ever since 1984. I taught in colleges, uh, both in China and in the United States. And uh, so I have my own uh, SAT, ACT English tutoring I have ever since 2006. I have three kids. Uh, they graduated from a Rice University, Stanford University, and also Harvard University. Uh, but most importantly, uh, the talk today that why is it pertaining to you? Because I've been a college counselor uh, for many years, ever since 2010, and have sent uh, uh, many students to Harvard, Stanford, or the like uh, every year. So let's talk about a common app. Uh, common App is the most commonly used college application platform for applying to uh, the colleges in the United States. So uh, this platform itself, uh, you know, ha contains quite a lot of information that you can learn about because they have contain con uh, it contains the information from different colleges that you are interested in, and also the system itself uh, tells a lot about how you should prepare yourself. And I believe that all students should create an account, uh, commonapp.org account uh, in ninth grade. Why? Because that way you can see, hey, what is expected of you uh, when you apply to colleges? And then if you read some of the information in 12th grade, then you get, you will, you probably will get surprised. What? You know, why? I didn't know that. Okay. So that's why start early. Okay. So. Yes, uh, application as a questions uh, from the colleges, even from the system, common app system itself may change from year to year. Okay, but most of them will stay put. That's why it is safe to see, hey, what's going on now to get yourself prepared. Okay, not all the colleges in the United States are in common app. Uh, for instance, if you want to apply to Univers U University of California, Georgetown, uh, University of Washington, Seattle, or University of Texas, Austin, so and so, and many more. Okay, so you probably won't see them. Okay, and then you have to go to their own portals to apply. Uh, and also, some of the high schools use other application portals, such as the Coalition for College or Navient. But most of the colleges are in Common App. So when we talk about a Common App, uh, the, there are two lists you have to pay special attention to. I have already shown you the route uh, once you get into uh, Common App uh, you know, web website. It goes from Common App tab on top, it goes down to edu Education on the left, and then go all the way down to Honors. So the first list is called Honors List. And I want you to pay special attention to the two key words, okay? Academic Achievements. The, do you see that? Do you wish to report any honors related to your academic achievements beginning with the ninth grade or international equivalent? Well, uh, legally speaking, it, your achievements must be academic, meaning they are related to your courses, uh, you know, such as uh, math, physics, and chemistry, uh, you know, AP Gov, or maybe uh, AP. Ge AP Geography, whatever, you know, it's, it's academic, okay? And most of the times, students uh, don't apply to, uh, you know, a major in athletics, uh, art, or music. So those awards, yeah, you, you still have those courses in school, but they are not counted as usually. 
uh, not counted as academic. So that's why uh, you shouldn't count them here. Uh, also, you have awards maybe from like your community service, your leadership. Uh, chances are they are not academic either. So that's why you cannot include those awards in this uh, list. There are five of them you need to include. And so make sure that you have five high-end, uh, you know, ideally on the national level, high-end uh, competition awards. Uh, sometimes a school has like academic award, awards as well for students. Uh, usually they call like a book awards, uh, department awards, or class awards, and they mean pretty much the same thing. Okay, so class award takes this word as an example. So uh, one department from, let's say, chemistry provides one award to one student in one class each year uh, because the student is outstanding. Now, this award is not necessarily based on your GPA. Uh, it ha it's like a comprehensive. You, it, it contains other evaluation criteria as well. So that's why we call it, since it's from one department and to one class, so that's why it's sometimes called a department award, sometimes it's called a class award. Uh, some, in some schools, they call it book award. I don't know why, but anyway, uh, that's what it is called. Uh, so that is valuable as well because, uh, you know, um, Many uh, schools now don't have this one, uh, but if you do have one, it's given to only one student. That's why it's valuable. Uh, most students in the in, in the class uh, don't get one. Uh, if you're lucky enough, you get one over four years. And uh, some very very outstanding students get like a four to five, and then you 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 you're hated <laughs> obviously by other students anyway. But because you're outstanding, too too outstanding. The second list is called activities list, uh, the activities list. And this one contains 10 activities. Uh, it's the same route, common app, activities, and then you, you, you are there. Um, so you are supposed to provide 10 high quality activity, uh, activities, such as like you, oh yeah, I got into a you know, a highly competitive summer program, and that is high quality activity. Uh, I conducted a research and uh, got a paper published or presented to a conference. Uh, that's high quality activity. Uh, and also leadership activities and committee service activities. Uh, you know, this list that does not have to contain academic uh, stuff. You can have uh, activities from all areas. So these two lists oftentimes serve as like a screening tools for uh, because an admission officer can take a look at these activities, uh, take a look at these two lists, then can get a sense uh, whether you're good, you're outstanding or not. So that uh, to successfully fill out these two lists, a student must do long-term preparation. You know, you cannot just like in 12th grade, suddenly you see these two lists, everything uh, pours onto the pages. There is no chance you can do that. So that's why you have to prepare them long-term. Uh, a major part of my job as a college college counselor is to help my students come up with two impressive lists. Largely, uh, there are two types of essay questions in Common App. Uh, the first type is called Common App Essay Questions. Yeah, and you only need to write one, okay? And then this essay will be uh, seen by all the colleges you apply to. The second kind is called uh, supplemental essay questions. They are from different universities themselves. Okay, so let's take a look at common app essay questions. Uh, you have 650 words uh, in 2021. Uh, before that, about like four or five years, it's always the case. So this number, uh, sometimes uh, it does change uh, over time, but at, at least recently it is 650. And they have seven questions uh, at this moment. You have like a, a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And uh, some people just would like to spend so much time to talk about uh, these questions. But let me just read the two of them to you. Question number one and question num number seven. Number one, some students have a background, identity, interest, or talent that is so meaningful, they believe their application would be incomplete without it. If this sounds like you, then please, Share your story. So in this case, as you can tell, uh, you know, what, what am I supposed to talk about? 
as you can see from the question, that you can talk about anything, everything. Uh, so, you know, have a background. What do you mean by background? What do you mean by identity, interest, or talent? It, it can be anything, right? Exactly. And then number seven, share an essay on any topic of your choice. It can be one you have already written, one that re uh, responds to a different prompt or one of your own design. What does that mean? That means you can talk, talk about anything, everything. It, so that's why question number one and number seven are pretty much similar. And then you can just ignore uh, the questions in between, right? Two to six. Why? Because I already told you, you can talk about anything, everything. Uh, so it doesn't really matter. But what matters is that you have an impressive story to tell. That is what matters. Okay. So, so this is what you uh, need to pay attention to. You need to come up with something really, really impressive to uh, show to the admission officers about yourself. Okay. So uh, the purpose of writing this essay is to present an outstanding image of you, ideally not in the academic area, so that uh, the innovation officers will feel after reading the essay, ah, oh, that, ah, oh, this is going to be a big loss if we don't admit uh, the student. So this is the impression you want to give to them. Okay. So to make this essay very impressive, obviously, you must have done something impressive. Otherwise, I can teach you all the writing skills, but you still have nothing to say about yourself or nothing impressive to say about yourself. So that's why it is important you get yourself prepared. All right, so you say, uh, what is a, a good, uh, a common app essay is like? So let me give an example here. Uh, this essay uh, was written by one of my students. Uh, and also uh, to protect the students' uh, privacy, I have got rid of, uh, gotten rid of all the like uh, sensitive information and changed, especially by changing some of the names in there. So let's get to it. A sea of young, nervous faces appeared on my screen bubbling with curiosity. Moments ago, the last girl finished pitching her business ideas. Welcome to the e-girls entrepreneurial uh, competition closing ceremony, I announced to the animated participants through the screen. Over 480 girls from 49 countries participated in this competition. Now it's time to celebrate your hard work and a passion for entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship. Excitement uh, permeated the uh, ceremony, hands clenched, lip, uh, lips sealed, breath held. Moments later, thunderous applause greeted the finalist announcements. I was overjoyed. I had been waiting for this moment for a while. In grade nine, I joined the Distributive Education Clubs of America, DECA. Right from the beginning of my journey in this business community, I noticed I was always one of a handful of girls participating. During the governor's dinner held by junior achievement, I found myself the only girl at the dinner table. In the summer of 2019, as I stepped into the Launch X Entrepreneurial Summer Program, I noticed that each team consisted of three male participants and only one female. After Launch X, I reflected on my experiences in business and realized that there is a huge gender gap in society. I wondered whether other girls experienced what I had experienced. I needed to make a change. We need to give more opportunities to girls who are interested in business, especially entrepreneurship. I told myself. In early 2020, I created a girls business club aiming to empower high school girls to become emerging entrepreneurs. I co-founded eGirls and initiated the plan to launch the eGirls Entrepreneurial Competition, EEC, intended to connect and engage business-minded girls like myself. I successfully recruited an executive team. Quickly, however, we hit the wall of financial hardship. We needed funds to establish an online presence, launch a social media campaign, and award EEC winners. Meanwhile, Sponsorship interests were low, so was the number of a program enrollment. Team spirit deflated, uh, interest diminishing, I felt worried. I am in, I'm in to win, I remembered Hillary Clinton's campaign slogan. 
Social media campaign is critical to our success. I used my personal savings to support this mission. I designed the eGirls logo and the web pages. Personally, reached out to many business entities and online communities, including Technovation, a global business education organization. Three days later, we received submissions from 50 participants. After months of hard work, we were thrilled to see 487 participants. I also led the fundraising team to better target potential sponsors. With our strong enrollment numbers and effective communications, 80 high-impact emails per day, we eventually received over $7,500, higher than our initial goal. As a part of this competition, we established a mentor-mentee system. I hosted several mentoring sessions for participants. Sonia was one of my mentees. Through her, I saw a great ten version of me, full of creative and authentic ideas, but afraid of speaking up. I listened carefully about her plan and discussed with her setting up a cultural clothing store. Strategically focused on an array of envir environmentally friendly garments, EEC has definitely helped me a lot, build up my courage, deepen my entrepreneurial knowledge. I really enjoyed it," she said. "Yes, me too." Our post-event survey showed that 97.3 percent of participants would love to join the competition the next year. Also, Professor J O, one of the judges for EEC and the acting vice dean of the R School of Management at the University T, expressed a strong interest in having the R School form a partnership with E Girls to host future events. Bidding farewell with the last participant, I remained in my seat, gazing at the E Girls logo on the screen. It accompanied me for the past nine months. It witnessed my passion, devotion, ups and downs, and my growth as an emerging young professional. It empowers it, it empowers me for the past, now, and the future. So、um, the reason I ch have chosen this uh, essay, uh, it's a、uh, from year two thousand twenty. Yeah,、uh, the reason I have chosen this essay is that this stu student has demonstrated very strong. Uh, leadership not only in her school but also on a national or even international level, and so、uh, the probably you didn't know that all the students、uh, I have coached,、uh, they have like a huge edge over other students when they have very strong leadership. So that's important.、Uh, this essay has demonstrated such like a, a very strong image,、uh, you know, to the admission offices. By the way. This girl stayed in my college counseling program for two years,、uh, and I designed numerous activities for her, and provided very detailed ideas to the implementation of those ideas in her activities, in, including her organization,、uh, the nonprofit organization I mentioned in the common app essay.、Uh, that's how she achieved so much over the years、uh, in her competitions, in her leadership, in community service,、uh, as well. And、uh, so she came up with two very strong. Lists. So this student got accepted by her dream school.、Uh, she wanted to go to U Penn Wharton Business School,、uh, and she got in in ED、uh, early decision in two thousand twenty. Okay, so the、uh, second type is called supplemental essay questions, and、uh, long and short,、uh, these questions、uh, in a very drastically in terms of content, and they cover. Uh, your academic or non-academic interests, right? Reasons for attending a particular college, for instance.、Uh, highlight of your achievements, understanding of the society, involvement in the community, leadership, personality traits, so and so. So th there are just so many、uh, different kinds. But there is one question that is quite common、uh, across、uh, universities. It's called "Why us?" question. Sometimes you will say, "Hey,、uh, you know,、uh, let let me give an example here, Cornell." Why are you drawn to studying the major you have selected? Please discuss how your interests and the related experiences have influenced your choice. Specifically, how will an education from the College of Arts and Life Sciences?、Uh, let's pretend it, the student is going to apply to this、uh, school and Cornell University. Help you achieve your academic goals. 
Uh, so in this essay, uh, you're supposed to talk about uh, why do you why you want to apply to Cornell University, okay? And then yeah, why Johns Hopkins? Why Penn? Uh, why another university? So many many universities have a similar question like this. Uh, so to answer this question, obviously you need to know what you want to study as your ma as your major. And uh, so you'd better not say oh undecided. If you want to apply to a you know, like a routine state college, if you are undecided, they don't mind. Uh, everybody's welcome, so long as your GPA is like high enough, okay? But if you apply to a, a top college, uh, many, many students who don't, uh, many students who know exactly what they want, want to study, uh, they get rejected. So why do you think they want to admit you? Because you don't even know what you want to study in life, you know? So that's, that's a major question you should already have an answer to. Number two, are you prepared for studying that major, right? You want to study, uh, let's say, psychology. Uh, what have you achieved in psychology uh, study? Oh, nothing. That doesn't make sense, okay? It doesn't make sense. Uh, number three, why do you have to study that major at Cornell in this case? Uh, you need to uh, obviously do your homework about Cornell uh, to successfully answer this question. Okay, so let's take a look at some very tough uh, essay questions. Uh, and once you've read, you will notice, you will, you will understand much better why you have to do long-term preparation. Take a look at this question, okay? Uh, how, it's from Stanford. How did you spend your last two summers? And if you read this question uh, in the 12th grade, you may have like a heart attack if you didn't do anything in the last two summers. It's too late. The game is over, right? Exactly. So I'm just giving an example here to you. So you obviously must have do, done something outstanding in the last two summers before you consider applying to Stanford. Okay, that's one. Another one. Uh, it's from a U University of California. Uh, yeah, UC is not in Common App. Uh, here we go. Question number one. Uh, describe an example of your leadership experience in which you have positively influenced others helped resolve disputes or contributed to group efforts over time. Get it? Pay attention to the, pay attention to the last two words, over time. Okay, it's not just like a one-time shot, okay? So um, if you want to talk about your leadership, it's it, it got to be a long-term effort. Obviously, you have to be prepared. Uh, this question is from MIT. Uh, tell us about the most significant challenge you have faced or something important that didn't go according to plan. How did you manage the situation? All right. So in this question, as you can tell, there are two parts that are key to answering this question. Number one, most significant challenge. So in this case, uh, you know, number one, you, you got to have a challenge, okay? You have experience already. And uh, so guess what? I, I help students apply to MIT every year. And uh, almost every year, students would ask me, Dr. Wong, you know, um, I, my life has been very smooth all, all these years. I don't really have any uh, significant challenge. And what should I say for the, uh, in this essay? You know, what do you think I can tell the student, right? I cannot change your history. I don't know what you can say. Sorry, it's too late. Exactly. So that's why. Uh, and then you, some, uh, some of the listeners here will say that, oh, are you trying to say that I should get into some trouble? I never said that. Okay. It's not what I mean. But what I do mean is that, you know, challenges. When do you uh, face challenges? Right? Oftentimes when you get out of your comfort zone, you get into, you get into challenges. So that's why think about how you can prepare yourself. Yeah, for this question, if you are determined to apply to MIT. Also, second, uh, in this case, uh, another key word is manage. The most important part uh, is manage. How did you manage the situation? Uh, so they want to see how outstanding you are. So that's why you have to uh, show uh, how I managed to make, uh, to dissolve the challenge, to overcome the challenge. All right, so conclusion. If you didn't know, now you should know that college applications depend on a long-term systematic preparation, okay? So before high school years, if you're, uh, if the listeners he here are in middle school, the, you know, or, or the parents are 
uh, who your your kids are in the middle school. So you need to understand before high school years, a student should cultivate interests, try to find out what exactly uh, he or she wants to major in or uh, uh, during majoring during college years, and make it. And then you need to make extensive ac academic preparation for applying to that major. So the earlier you know what you want to study as a major, the better. So then your preparation in high school years will all be targeted. Uh, otherwise, you're going to just explore, explore until the end. When you apply to colleges, you see, oh, I don't know. Then let me apply to undecided. Oh, that's pathetic, to be honest. Uh, it's, it's not good. It's not good. Uh, many middle school students I know begin to study biology and computer science, physics, chemistry, so and so, uh, apart from math and English in the middle school. Okay, so that's why uh, you know, it, it's it's important that you get to know some of these things. And the, online, there are many, uh, you know, uh, free websites to, uh, providing free courses for you to explore a particular area uh, that you are interested in. So uh, during high school, now moving on to high school, a student should fully develop his or her potential in that area outside of, uh, you know, the area which you claim as your major, outside of the classroom in terms of extra learning, competitions, internships, research, and so and so. So it's important that you don't want to say, oh, how have you prepared? I have prepared nothing. That's not good. That's not good at all. Okay, so you, you have to be prepared. Uh, also in high school, a student should develop a way beyond academics. Uh, students who can demonstrate a strong leadership credential, as I told you earlier, uh, have a huge edge over other students who don't. And students, because it's very, the concept is very easy to understand because all those top colleges want to train future leaders. So that's why, hey, I'm already a strong leader. Okay, please admit me. That makes better sense. Uh, students should come up with impressive achievements in community service as well, uh, because you are showing that you're not just uh, taking care of yourself, but you're taking care of your community, your people around you. All right, so uh, that's pretty much it uh, for today. And I uh, hope you uh, will do well in your college uh, application preparation. Also along the way, I have uh, a class, uh, a SAT, ACT English class. I've taught ever since 2006. And you know, if you're interested, uh, please contact me. Also, I uh, provide long-term college counseling uh, ever since ninth grade till 11th grade. Uh, that's what I do for, uh, have done this for many students over the years already. Also, some students need uh, specific support in the last year when they apply to the colleges. I uh, can help you uh, with that as well. So here's my uh, uh, email address. All right, again, thank you very much.